So it's been a couple days and our yeast is actively fermenting these things. Um, you can see the cap has risen really, really nicely to the top. And uh, what we've been doing is trying to keep the temperature between about 80 and 85 degrees. And for red wine, you can go anywhere from 70-ish to 89-ish. And the higher you get towards the high end of that spectrum, the more um, tannin and color that you'll get. And then, of course, the lower end of that spectrum, you'll end up with a little bit of a lighter wine. So depending on what you really want to do, um, it's kind of up to you. You have some control there. And of course, with white wine, it's the complete opposite. If you want to retain that fruitiness, you're going to want to ferment nice and cold, uh, but not too cold to stunt the yeast. So what we're going to do now is just our punch down, and we're going to punch this down three times a day. You can punch maybe anywhere from two to really as many times a day as you want, but we just want to submerge this cap that's really thick. Just kind of submerge it and just keep it nice and healthy. It's kind of like your, you know, like your bag of tea, how you're dipping that and you're just dipping all these skins into the wine and getting all that color and flavor out of them and making sure they don't get too uh, dried out or oxidized by sitting on top. And we'll just monitor the sugar levels in this and uh, just let it ferment and ferment until it runs dry which should be anywhere from about five to seven days from uh, the time you start it. And then it'll be time to press with our wine press. So it's been about seven days of uh, fermentation on the skins of these red wine grapes. And we've been punching them down three times a day and uh, Two days ago we added the malolactic bacteria so it can go through malolactic fermentation which will make the, the uh, malic acid which is like your sour apple taste converted into lactic acid which is more of like a buttery style which you might expect in a red wine. And now it's time to go ahead and press these off the skins and uh, put them in a carboy and from this point on we're really really going to try to limit the air contact of this wine. But one thing I just wanted to mention before we go ahead is some things to keep in mind when you're making a red wine and when you're making especially from grapes. Um, you really have a lot of control of what the final wine is. And what I mean by that is there are some variables that can really affect the outcome. So um, fermentation temperature we mentioned earlier. The, hot, the closer to that 80 degrees, the more extraction you're, get, you're gonna get, the more tannin you're gonna get the lower, the more fruity it's gonna be. Um, do you, if you put some um, stems in, it's gonna have more tan. If you leave some whole grapes that are um, uncrushed, you're gonna get more jammy flavors. Um, <clears throat> let's see, uh, if you, oh, time on the skin. So if you press a little early, you could press as early as five days um, or as late as um, like in Bordeaux, they might wait weeks and they'll just pump some inert gas on that wine to keep it from uh, spoiling. So that'll give it more and more full body. So you're kind of looking for some balance point. Um, and of course, in this case, I've got in my carboy that I'll be racking into, I've got a whole bunch of oak. I've got about one ounce per gallon of um, toasted oak. But things that you really buy all these freedoms when you make it from fresh grapes versus the juice pails and maybe a reason why you want to spare the, or uh, spend the extra money on the, the actual grapes. So now we'll just go ahead and um, Start pressing. So let's take this bucket, same bucket you've seen in the other videos, and um, just gonna pour it into our little basket press that we have here. I'm not gonna pour it too fast because I don't want it to start, you know, spraying all over. And we'll let the free run juice. So you have kind of two stages of juice. You have free run juice and pressed juice. And the free run will be like your ultra premium juice. So we'll separate that from the pressed juice. You can see it's nice and super red, which is what we're looking for. 
And I'll just kind of slowly do this, and once we get all the juice in, then we'll, um, we'll start to put our pressing plates in, stack our blocks, and start to actually press this stuff. Alright, so I've let all the free run juice run off and put that in my five gallon and my one gallon. I got a full six gallons of free run slash really, really lightly pressed juice. And uh, of course, I've put some uh, rice hulls, mixed some rice hulls in, which is an optional step, but I think it just kind of helps the yield a little bit as far as that goes. And now this is the going to be the pressed juice, which I'm putting in this separate one gallon jug. All these will be fitted with airlocks and they've all been sterilized. And this last one, we'll definitely keep track of it because it's going to be the most bitter of all the juices. So we'll kind of um, blend it in as necessary. And of course, we're not going to press very hard. Um, the most amount of force I'll put in this lever is probably about 20 pounds. Anything beyond that is going to start to cause too much um, cannon extraction. <clears throat> but we'll just ratchet it and then every once in a while um, you know, let it sit and do it again. But that's really it for this step. And then uh, next comes the aging and you'll hear back from us in probably um, a few months. 36 hour update. Um, we've got a lot of gross leaves on the bottom of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rack it off the gross leaves because once those kind of compact down at the bottom, um, and you get that big one inch stack of um, old dead yeast cells, what could happen is you could get some hydrogen sulfide issues, which is the swamp gas smell of a wine, and you really, really just don't even want to have to deal with that. Uh, so we're just going to get it off there. And I don't mind some leaves, um, like the fine leaves, so I'm not that particular during this racking. I just don't want that real, real heavy sediment that we have right now.